Hey everybody, today we're going to do some more ranked games. I just got back, so this is my first three ranked games I've played since uh, my break. So let's see how it goes. Well, I know how it goes, but you don't know. I had a pretty... I had both Saskia and Illyrian in my starting hand. Um, I'm not like some of the other players. I'm not as afraid of Ox as others. Like, it's fine. To me, the ox isn't actually generating as much value as other silvers would. I'd rather ox be used this round than any other round. Let's put it that way. I probably should be passing sooner rather than later, but eh. <laughs> we'll just go with it. It looks like a little bit similar to the spell guard decks, but you know, spell guard got wrecked. Okay, well, that's two of his ox, but he still has like a Kahir and stuff, so I'm worried about that. I need to get this Lacerate out because I'm not going to get another chance to use a good Lacerate. Lacerate becomes better as the longer the round goes, naturally. So he has his ox in his hand again. That really bothers me. He locked up all my Dragoons. <laughs> not really all that bad. Since he's damaged them, it also makes it weaker for him to use things like... I'll have to, what would I play? Uh, Letho. I actually don't think Letho is a good card. Why? Because Letho only really represents... It's a two-card combo. So if he did 22 damage, he, he absorbed 21 points. He's going to use a Dimeridium Bomb. And that's going to remove 21 points. So you just do 21 divided by 2, and that's the strength of those two cards, and it's not worth it. Letho's only great if you're playing a bunch of spies and other things that you can consume. Big spies, like Cantarella. I'm actually happy I pulled Saskia here. Because when I instant pass, I can get rid of her from my hand and guarantee that I'm not going to get her as the result of my mulligan. So he used the gold card to get what he wanted on the top of his deck. I don't know what that's going to be. It might help him with his uh, those units that look at the top card in your deck and change their status based on it. I'm actually happy he showed me he still has Ox in his hand, but I know why he revealed the Ox. He wants to buff it with the Nausicaa Brigade. I'm happy he didn't see my Teruvial. I was worried about that. I don't want to play my Teruvial until my... Uh, I don't want to play my Teruvial until he plays his Ox. I decided to take a risk and just go straight for the Elven Mercenary. The reason for that is it's just, it's safer points, in my opinion. I would, like, the Azure's uh, Double Cross would get me six points just like Elven Mercenary into the Smuggler. And I know the Smuggler's real job is just to bait out Ox. So I played my Teruvial last. Wasn't really much of a risk because I had the point advantage. So, that was a interesting game. I don't usually run into Amiris anymore, but... Yeah. On this mulligan, I'm not really comfortable mulliganing out anything else unless I get a Illyrian or a uh, Saskia. But I have all the other combo pieces. I have a lot of silvers, lots of golds. Having both the mullet, um, ambush cards in my hand is problematic, but I don't really care if I get Isengrim in this matchup, because I already know I'm going to win through the Shiru. And maybe a Lacerate. Who knows? I decided to convert one of my Elven Mercenaries. I know Elven Mercenaries is a valuable card. I'm trying to bait into a, um, a lock card. That's why I put it there. But maybe I could have put it in between my Dragoons. Now, I'm going to just pass. I have the Bamboozle set up. 
due to uh, Shiro being an elf. If my opponent wants to win, he's going to have to play two cards, which wouldn't be bad. Personally, if I were him, I would go for the two cards. Because he gets some of his card advantage back from... <laughs> from the instant pass in round two. I'm actually not a fan of what my opponent's doing right here, because a decoy might have been more effective on those two cards. It depends on whether or not they're running decoy. So, to be fair. So I got the Isengrim. I'm not a fan of uh, pushing it out just in case I get Saskia. I have enough deck thinning. I can get all the other cards. I have. Uh, I drew all my gold, so... So, I'm going to get the Dragoon out fast. I'm worried about the Smuggler becoming too big. But with the fact that my opponent's obviously playing... The captains, I'm not too worried about the smuggler getting too huge. Now I have to decide where I want to put this. I don't know, think my opponent's going to run lacerates. Or if they did, they're going to push them out of their hand. Because the, the deck my opponent's playing is really packed for cards. So there aren't very many options. Um, here it's probably easier to just play Isengrim. It's safe. It doesn't do anything that hurts me. Okay. Well, I see a good Scorch opportunity here. Now, this op decision by my opponent surprises me. Like, he obviously has three captains left in his hand. It, very unlikely that he doesn't have all three. So, I'm just going to move over my Dwarven Mercenaries, keep buffing up my Bran. I can safely play this because it's only going to be 14 strength. I calculated it before I played it. Make sure that I wasn't going to be in range of the captains. I'm going to Scorch now rather than just play the uh, Bran, even though it would have been safe. Like, I didn't want to risk not having well I, I could have just played the bran uh, and then scorched it would have been bet more points doesn't matter that much no because i dominated my opponent there so i want you guys to kind of guess what kind of dagon player i'm playing against so he plays a necker i'm assuming he has necker warriors so i'm trying to get rid of that before it becomes a problem My opponent is now disoriented by my decision. He uses his leader ability, which surprises me, but I guess he just wants to get those uh, Foglets out of his deck or try to out-tempo me. Yeah, he had to do that, because if he moved them, they would have gotten buffed. Which is uh, interesting that my opponent caught that. Okay. He has, he's playing token, as far as I'm can tell. I decide to convert one of my Dagons into a Scorch. You can't see it, but I have a Scorch in my hand. <laughs> Promise. I got an excellent value on my Elven Mercenary. Three Weathers were removed. Patience. Now I want to point out something right here. Notice that there are only two Foglets in his deck. That's because he banished one with his own card. I'm like, what? What am I playing against? <laughs> Why are you playing Ghoul? <laughs> is this casual? Is this easy mode? Because he doesn't have tokens, I get the Becker Swiss Mirror was a zero point play. Finally, the Dagon comes out. I really didn't need to play it, but I wanted to kind of get my opponent to uh, pass. He makes a mistake. He's still playing into this round. I'm done. I can't play the Scorch. He already played his high point card with the crones. I got a safe instant pass here. So as far as I can tell, he has consume and he has weather. 
He played all his weather in the first round because weather's better the longer the round is. Or and he got a lot of his high value weather out for early. I decided to get rid of the Arrakis Behemoth because it might be worth a lot of points, and I can always double scorch if he does something like that. I'm gonna play my uh, Morin as soon as possible. My opponent forfeits. Like I could have played Morin earlier, I guess. <laughs> been safer but it would have been in scorch range if i did that so I'm glad, i hope you guys enjoyed those games it was weird to say the least i want to say this though i like ranked better than casual because in ranked people play their casual decks and in casual people play their ranked decks i go up against masters and grandmasters all the time when i'm just queuing into casual and they're playing their best decks, practicing them before they go into ranked. It's so uncomfortable. Then I go into ranked and I'm playing against players that are probably not, don't have as much time with the game as me, but they're playing whatever deck they want. Now it's going to change when I'm higher ranked, of course, but in rank 17, that's where I want to go if I want to just goof off and do whatever I want. <laughs> It seems. Oh, and uh, my win rate is now 12 wins, one loss since rank 16. That's pretty good. No matter what you people say, I'm gonna do my thing my way. No matter what you people do, I'm gonna do my thing much better than you. No matter what you say or do, oh boy, you're out of luck. It's gonna roll right off of me like water off the back of a dog.